No. Ever been to prison? Jail? <laughs> nope. <laughs> mm-hmm. I went that one time and um, it was pretty, it was pretty eye opening, you know, to just be, to, to what it did to me when I, I got arrested for drunk driving. I was 20, so I was a minor. And um, the roadside um, sobriety test, I failed (laughs) and then I failed the breathalyzer and they cuffed me and put me in the cruiser and I was one mouthy motherfucker. I was talking (laughs) some kind of shit in my five foot two hundred pound self at the time. I was shorter and much smaller than I am now. And I remember trash talking. I was so drunk. I was trash talking all the way to to the jail. (laughs) Trash talking in the jail. And I think to myself now, it's a wonder I didn't get slapped, you know. And the guy printed me. He was so patient. Um, uh, He did tell me I looked like his ex-girlfriend, which was really weird. But other than that. <laughs> Possibly inappropriate. A little bit inappropriate. But he told me that in the parking lot at the quick stop where I got arrested. <laughs> but, but other than that, I thought. As I look back on it, I think how much patience a a police officer has to have to deal with some drunk, belligerent, 20-year-old asshole who's (laughs) fighting the truth. I am not drunk. Your machine is broken. You know, just like, oh, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I remember saying- Wait a minute. That was a Karen for bad. That was a Karen for bad. (laughs) That was a Karen for bad. I was. But at the time, obviously, I was like not willing to take responsibility, really angry, couldn't believe this was happening to me. But looking back on it, they treated me with so much respect and care. And obviously, I'm a white girl. I get that. I am not a black girl even in the same situation. I understand. I can't I can't change my color. I can't change that. But I just can't imagine how much patience most police officers have to have every single day to put up with the bullshit that people just throw at them so aggressively. And I'm completely wrong, totally wrong. And they have to put up with that, you know, they got fingerprinted. And then then they put me in the office with the female officer. Um, And then my dad was out of town. My dad was in New Mexico skiing. And my mom was in Mexico on vacation. So I didn't have anybody to call to bail me out. So I called my ex-boyfriend's dad, who was my dad's best friend growing up. So I was like, I'm going to call him and see if he'll come get me out. And I'll pay him back when he gets me out. So I hear him open the front door of the jail and go, where's my goddamn daughter? Where's my goddamn daughter? And I go, oh, my God, he's drunk. He's drunk also. (laughs) So he picked me up drunk, and he was walking through the jailhouse going, I'm going to bring my John Deere up here and rip the front wall off this jail if you don't get my daughter out of jail right now. (laughs) Clearly not his daughter. Um, He was completely drunk, and they let me go with him. (laughs) And he he drove me home, and the next morning I got up, it was a Sunday the next morning and I drove to his house and I thanked him and I said, I can't get money out of the bank today because it's Sunday, no ATMs at the time. I think it was like $400 was my bail. I said, but I'll bring it to you tomorrow. And he, I did. I brought it to him the next day. But I was like, I can't believe they're letting me go with him. He is so drunk. <laughs> How crazy is that? And then obviously I'd tell my parents and I, my parents were really upset And uh, my dad knows everybody in our hometown. He's like, you know what? Let's just get you a lawyer just to get, make sure this is done right right, and clean and you're done. So he got me a lawyer and the lawyer said, we're going to have you plead no low contender, which means I'm not going to do this again. And if you do it again, then you have to pay for both offenses, right? So it's kind of like your get out of jail free card as long as you fly straight from then on out. So we did that. We went to jail with my mom, went to uh, court. My county is so small that at the time they only had one day a month where they dealt with like DUI and that kind of offenses. So we went to court and the court was packed. It was basically a room with like a folding table and the judge was behind the folding table and folding chairs. So it was not even really a courtroom, but it was at the courthouse. 
So we're standing against the wall because there's no seats. And it's my mom, my lawyer, and me and my dad. And we're all standing against the wall. And there's this real hillbilly in front of the judge. And he's holding his hat in his hand. And he says, he's talking to this hillbilly. And I'm just trying to like get my bearings in court. And I got to remember, I got to remember, I'm saying no low contender. I'm going to say, I'm never going to say, yes, I'll pay the fine. If there's community service, yes, I'll do it. I'm just kind of rehearsing what I'm going to say. And this hill, he says to the hillbilly, well, Mr. So-and-so, I sentenced you to 10 months in prison. And the hillbilly farted. <laughs> and he farted so loud that it scared him. And he tried to like suck it back up. He went, like that. And my dad and I have this problem. If we get really tickled and laugh really hard, we lose all our muscle control. So my dad starts sliding down the wall, laughing. He's sliding, he's sliding, and he grabs the thermostat on the wall. And he's on the thermostat, sliding down the wall, and I'm watching him laughing. I can't stop laughing. And the judge goes, Sir, are you okay? To my dad. And my dad can't talk because he's laughing so hard that he slid all the way into the floor. And the bailiff had to come and get my dad and take him outside because they thought he was like passing out or something. And I'm laughing because we're laughing at this hillbilly that just farted so loud in front of this judge. So then, of course, I was like, I got to get it together. I got to get it together. There's no way I'm next. I was freaking next. No joke. They call me. I'm next. And I'm going... I can't keep it together. I'm standing in front of this judge and he goes, Miss Kemp, I don't think that you are taking this very seriously. And I was going, I'm taking it so seriously. I'm so sorry. I'm taking this so seriously. I couldn't get myself together. I finally did. I pled no low and I said, I agreed to pay the fine, which was like $1,200, no community service. I go outside and my dad is laying down on a bench arm over his eyes, still laughing, crying, laughing at this fucking hillbilly that farted in front of a judge. <laughs> so I paid my fine and that was it. But yeah, oh I will God. never forget watching. My mother was furious with my dad because they'd hated each other anyway. And she was so furious with him. Yeah, he just slid like his legs. just He just slid down the wall. And grab the thermostat. Like a thermostat's going to hold you up. He just grabbed the round thermostat and just hung there oh until God. they removed him. They physically removed him from the courtroom. <laughs> Isn't that a funny story? Yeah, that's going in your book. That's, that's <laughs> such a funny story. Uh, anyway, it's one of my favorite memories of my dad. Because we were very serious when we walked in that courtroom. We were very serious. And th that guy farted. And he was so fat. That, like, I almost remember it. You know how you remember things? Actually, not exactly like it happened. Yeah. I remember it in slow motion. <laughs> like, where I can see his whole body going, gah, 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 as he's trying to suck the fart back up his ass cheek. <laughs> it was so funny. Anyway, that's my experience with prison. <laughs> wow. Between my Uncle Terry and that. I'm good. A little bit different than the book. A little bit different. A little bit different than the book. It was really funny, though. Anyway.